Okay, so we're going to begin with the hip. And uh, the hip area for ultrasound can be confusing because there's a lot of structures, and the question is what do you look at and how do you look at each structure? So how I'm going to break it down into is a number of steps. The first one is looking at the hip joint itself. And then the next area I'm going to talk about for the anterior hip is how I evaluate a, like a sports-type injury and the structures I look at anteriorly, including uh, the common aponeurosis to the adductor tendons and for iliso snapping. And then we're going to look in the side of the hip at the greater trochanter. And lastly, posteriorly looking at the hamstring. So usually when a patient comes to me with hip pain, the bare minimum will be the hip joint and the trochanteric area. By far, that's the most common site for pathology. If someone has a, a sports-type injury with groin pain, then I'll move on to the other anterior hip structures, which I'll talk about. I usually only look at the hamstring, of course, when they have hamstring uh, symptoms. So that's my approach to the hip. So beginning with the hip joint, the first thing is I, I hear people say that you must use a curvilinear transducer for the hip. That's completely false. Remember that the, the goal here is to use the highest frequency transducer that you can to maximize <coughs> resolution. So if you have a thin patient like this, a linear transducer will be fine. I go on to a curvilinear transducer for problem solving if I cannot penetrate deep enough or if I'm guiding a needle. So I'm going to start long axis, which is going to be sagittal oblique, which is parallel to the femoral neck. Distal will be to the right side of the screen. And the bony landmark that we use here is the femoral head. You can see the femoral head, the hyaline cartilage, the acetabulum. Here is the fibrocartilage labrum. This structure here is the joint capsule and part of the ileus tendon. 